What's up, everybody? It's me, KB Chronic, back again uh, after an extensive vacation. Um, but, I mean, you know, at this point, like, everybody knows how the in-between seasons work. Um, but, yeah, anyways, we're back, and I decided to do something a little bit different this season. Um, instead of, you know, just letting it kind of roll the way it goes, we're going to have a season-long tournament. Uh, it's called the INCW World Tournament. I think that's what I decided to call it. But, I mean, that's effectively what it is. Um, it's five teams from four different countries. Or four different, yeah, four different countries. Um, all fighting to see who the best is. Um, <coughs> I haven't completely decided on what the end game, like the end goal is going to be like what the winning team gets or anything of that nature. Um, but it'll be it'll definitely be worth an entire season's worth of whatever. Um, but yeah, so we have Team INCW, which is five people that I handpicked. Uh, then we have, they're called Ray Mercianos, or it translates, I guess, I, I Google translated it, and it's uh, Mercenary Kings. Uh, representing Mexico and then you have uh, the Super Aces representing Japan and you have the Queen's Guard representing um, the UK we're gonna get to know uh, a few of them here and there I notice I only mentioned four teams because there were only supposed to be four teams in the beginning um, but then if you read the chat whenever specifically like whenever we're live on YouTube um, if you read the chat you'll notice that there's a couple people going back and forth talking about this camp, this mystery camp or whatever. Well, apparently, there's a lot of people in that camp, and they've all passed through INCW at one point, and they've all been champions, and they were also all just a tad bit upset that they weren't on Team INCW. So, being the good sport that I am, I allowed them to be make their own team. If they're the camp, pick your five best from the camp, and... Uh, Put them in the tournament, and we'll see what happens. So they did. Um, we'll go over who all's in each camp. Uh, the The ones you'll know the most are the ones from INCW and the ones from the camp. Um, but as far as the other teams, uh, let's see. For the Queen's Guard, uh, last season, for or during Holy Wars, we actually lost... Uh, no, we didn't lose anybody from the Queen's Guard, but... Iron Duke Taylor decided that he was going to form the Queen's Guard and lead the charge for his country, which is completely commendable, um, but it's whatever. Um, the Mercenary Kings out of Mexico, uh, we had a battle royal last season, and it was during Holy Wars, the winner of the seven man, no, of the eight man battle royal would stay in INCW. All of the losers were fired well it just so happens that two of the two of the losers was the desperado and pegasus um they are now known i don't know which one uh desperado is but either way both of them are now part of the mercenary kings so they're technically back in incw but they're not under the incw banner and they're not under any type of like basically if they get in trouble it's not my fault if they do something stupid it's not my fault um but yeah and then, you know pretty much everybody from the camp, because like I said, they've all been through here. And of course, you have to know everybody from Team INCW, because it's the best people in INCW. Um, we'll go ahead and go over the matches right now. And then, uh, <coughs> once we go over the matches, I'll kind of go into a little bit more detail. Um, so, the first match we have today is a fatal five-way, one fall to a finish. There's no elimination. Whoever gets... like. When somebody gets a pinfall or submission, it's over. Um, th th there's one member from each team. Uh, you have Pantaro, or Pantero, whichever way you want to pronounce it. Uh, you have Pantero from the camp. You have Ray Santos in the Black Mask from, of course, the Mercenary Kings. All of the Mercenary Kings have Ray at the beginning of their name. I'm guessing so that way we can identify them as kings. Um... Then the robot-looking individual, that is Ace-Zero, representing Japan. 
Um, and then we have the punk rock looking guy, which is PK, representing um, the Queen's Guard. And then for the uh, for the meat and potatoes of the whole thing, representing Team INCW, finally stepping back out from behind the uh, the production booth, the Hokage of the Anu Village, Shade. I don't know how happy he is to be back in the ring. Um, I know he's got a pretty decent record as far as in the ring. I think he was like 1-0. But, uh, yeah, he actually is willing to step up and represent Team INCW. I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, we did have another member uh, of basically production on Team INCW. Uh, but we'll get to that whenever I'm describing this next match. Um... So, the second match was supposed to be Average Joe from the camp versus uh, the NWC World Champion Patrick uh, from Team INCW. Well, a, about an hour ago, um, Patrick was discovered out back unconscious. Uh, clearly, it, it was some type of physical altercation. I don't know between him and who. I don't know between him and what. All I know is he couldn't, he, there was absolutely no way he could compete. Uh, the Blackwells are actually with him at a local medical center right now, making sure that everything's good to go, uh, to kind of give us updates and whatnot. So, uh, but Son of Asgard actually won the, uh, the eight-man battle royal I was talking about earlier at Holy Wars. So, if he won his spot to stay in INCW, he has every right to uh, hold a spot on Team INCW and, uh, you know, take Patrick's place for right now. So, but anyways, uh, yeah, we've got the Son of Asgard versus Average Joe, the winner get yeah, uh depending on how they win they got i got the whole point bracket broken down uh i'll go ahead and read that after i'll just kind of sprinkle that in throughout the show or whatever um but yeah so that's that should be a pretty decent match average joe is a, a odd individual um son of asgard was on a tear last season so we'll see where this goes and then this is a this match has nothing to do with the tournament, but Johnny Walker is part of Team INCW, um, but he also has an obligation to where he has to defend his hardcore title every episode. Um, he has to defend his hardcore title twenty four seven. So there are some times where he may be wrestling twice on one card, once for his belt and once for his team. Um, but Johnny Walker versus Navy Seal in a first blood match. That's going to be really, really interesting. If you didn't watch Holy Wars and you didn't get to see the return of Johnny Walker when he beat um, Insanity for the hardcore title, that was a hell of a match. Then we have a couple of guys that didn't get a whole lot of showtime last year, um, but maybe they'll get some this year. Or they should get some this year, I should say. We've got Dave Davidson, who was actually... Kind of working his way up at the end there. And then you got the Scorpion, which was kind of good around the middle por portion of Season 3. But, uh, you know, we just kind of... He kind of fell off. Uh, there was just a lot of new people cycling in. There was a lot of new stuff going on. And it's just... It was one of them back and forth type things. And then, for our main event, another tournament match. As a member of the camp, uh, probably the leader of the camp if I had to guess, Victor Sokolov goes one-on-one... -on -one with the, uh, I guess he's the muscle of the Queen's Guard, Tapu Khan. Um, I saw both these names on paper before the matches were made. Um, and I, I kind of didn't want to see this match this early on, but it's the first match of the season. It's the first match of the world turn, or it's, it's the first main event of the season, the first main event match of the world tournament. So why not, why not get something out of it? Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's all the meat and potatoes of everything. While we're getting these loading screens out the way, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the, the scoring system of 
the world tournament and gonna let y'all have that uh, let's see as soon as everything moves at any type of relative speed <coughs> Here we go. Alrighty. Oh my god, stop. So, a singles match winning by pinfall or submission is worth three points. A tag team match winning by pinfall or submission is worth six points. And a trios match, that's right, there will be trios matches because they're five man teams. And I think trios matches are badass. A trios match uh, is worth nine points for a pinfall or submission. All matches, uh, or in all matches, a count out victory will earn you one point and subtract one point from the competitor that was counted out. Um, all matches, or in all matches, a KO victory is worth 10 points. And in all matches, a DQ is minus five points for your team. In all matches, a draw is zero points. Nobody gets anything for a draw because nothing actually happened. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty well how it's all laid out. Um... What I'm going to do for this particular first match, um, whoever wins the five-man battle royal, they get five points for their team. Uh, there's also, it's kind of broken down to where there's individual points. Like when you win points, you win points for yourself and you win points for your team. So that way at the end, we'll not only have a winning team, but we'll have an MVP of that team. So pretty well lined out the mvp of the team uh i'm gonna have to talk with the uh the group or the the council or whatever we call them the collective the other people from the other two companies uh we're gonna have to have a little discussion but um if all works well then by the time we get to the end of the season whoever is the mvp of the winning team or even the mvp of the whole tournament um they're going to, if I have anything to say about it, which I should, they're going to get a world title shot. I don't care who has it. If Patrick has it, they fight Patrick. If somebody else from one of the other companies has it, they fight one somebody else from the other company. But that's like technically 52 weeks down the road. So with all that being said, time to get back into calling the matches like I do. Um, I've, I saw a couple of y'all post in the chat. Um, it's not pulling up. My chat's not showing me anything so i don't know what's exactly happening right now <clears throat> so we're just kind of going to roll with it and see what happens i do appreciate those of y'all who have tuned in to watch so far <laughs> um hopefully this season lives up to the hype <clears throat> um that's pretty much all I can hope for right now is that everything works out the way I want it to. <laughs> Hopefully everybody had a good Thanksgiving. Uh, nobody got severely injured during any type of uh, any type of holiday shenanigans. So yeah, this is awesome. I just can't see what's being said in Twitch or er, on chat. Man. Keep it up, guys. <laughs> Also, um, who are you guys pulling for here? Like, I know you only really know two of the five people. So it's going to be one of them things where we got to see how the people, see how they work in the match before we uh, can pick any favorites for the teams and whatnot. But holy shit, like, got some interesting characters. I know, me personally, I'm interested to see Shade get back in the ring. Uh, Pantero's always been doing good. Hey, I finally saw something in the chat. Um. I am going to be 100%, uh, biased. And I'm going to pull for Shade. Because I want Team INCW to win this whole thing. Uh, I don't know if any of y'all have noticed. But INCW, um... Like, the core of INCW hasn't really won anything. <laughs> I mean, Patrick did. Patrick's been doing good. He went from getting electrocuted to being the world champ. But now he's unconscious in a hospital bed. And, uh, 
we're still waiting to hear back from him. Or we're not clearly not going to hear from him. And the first one to get to the ring, Ace Zero. I really hope he doesn't wrestle in all that armor. I mean, it looks really cool. I will give him that. He he looks. He's kind of got like a spaceman vibe going on there. But man, if he wrestles and all that, we, somebody's gonna get hurt. Okay, good. He don't. What is this? I believe, yeah, Ray Santos. All right, didn't uh, didn't expect that from him, but that's you know what? That's maybe that's just the kind of luchador he is. All about pleasing the crowd. doing the work I'm definitely interested to see all the uh, just all the different styles come together another thing that I was interested in um, the teams like so you have different styles from the different teams and then within each team there's different styles so, it, there's like a thousand or tens of thousands of match combinations and style mock-ups that we could get out of everything. Representing the Queen's Guard. He doesn't look like somebody who would protect the Queen. But, I mean, who am I? Right? Just, just a dude behind the counter. guess um i would say maybe he's just off of appearance he's kind of the style of like a uh, a jimmy havoc or <clears throat> i don't know some other just like beat him up wrestler nothing like staple guns and barbed wire and thumbtacks will that there is no dq in this fatal five way but comes Pantero. Pantero has had a lot of success in this company. He's had a lot of success everywhere he goes. We've got two luchadors throwing down in this match. We've got, um, like I said, I'm assuming some type of hardcore style. And here comes Shade. Making his way down to the ring, rocking his I Noob headband. <clears throat> looking pretty confident. Look, definitely looking like a. Looking like he, he he firmly believes he's got a chance here. I'm not saying he don't, but I'm just saying, like, I don't know when the last time everybody else wrestled. But we'll see. We'll see. The wind is a little strong in the arena with that, uh, with his jacket there. But it's whatever. It's whatever. All right, all five competitors in the ring. And here we go. Oh! Ace Zero instantly going after Shade. Shade caught him up. Oh no, reversal. There's so much going on. Ace Zero sends Shade to the outside. Now he's going up top. Is he gonna chase him down? Pantero and uh, Ray Santos. 
fighting it out. Ooh, nice step up heel kick. PK getting involved with the Northern Lights suplex. Could have went for the pin, decided not to this early in the match, understandable. Ace Zero is just laying in the Shade outside. Shade's starting to fight back. Ooh, Pantero hangs PK up to dry on that top rope. PK rolls right outside, wisely getting out of the way of all that nonsense. Ooh, Brain Buster from Shade. And a... I don't know what that's called. <laughs> Shade, boom! With a Falcon Arrow, nobody kicks out of the Falcon Arrow. <laughs> Gonna lock in another one? No. Ooh! Hung Ace out to dry on the top rope. Back elbow by Ace Zero. Ooh! Meteora, double knees right to the face. Taking some time to pander through the crowd. Shades getting back to his feet. We still got three guys outside. And all of them are outside. Ace Zero's gonna meet with him. Ooh! Almost a wrecking ball, Hurricane Rana. Went for the back chop. Shade blocked it. PK going to the top rope. What's he got? Oh no, just pop it off. Breaks up the pin. Pantero tried to steal one. Nice kick to the face by Pantero. Reverses into uh, inverted DDT on PK. Maybe flatten that mohawk for him a little bit. Ooh, what a dragon screw. Nice going after the arm. Ray Santos, collar and elbow tie up with PK. Oh, step up in Zaguri again by uh, Ray Santos. And it to the crowd. Ooh, short DDT out there by A Zero. If you're just now tuning in, these five men all represent the different teams for the INCW World Tournament. Uh, you got Shade in the camo representing Team INCW. You've got the A Zero in the red and white representing. Um, I forgot what they're called. The Super Aces from team, from Japan. Uh, the individual with the mohawk is representing the Queen's Guard out of the UK. Uh, that's PK. Real fancy. Nice reversal there by Shane. And then in the black mask, you have Ray Santos uh, representing the Mercenary Kings out of Mexico. And then you have Pantero representing the camp, also technically out of INCW, but... It's whatever. It's what it is. <laughs> Dos Santos, or Ray Santos, Dos Santos, haha. <laughs> Ray Santos with a backflip getting out of the way of Pantero. Oh, Pantero with a backflip into the head scissors takeover. There is just mass chaos. <laughs> it's one fall to a finish. The winner gets five points for their team and for themselves. Who's going to be the first one to take it home? Ray Santos coming off the top rope with a crossbody. Looked like we were about to have a pin there, but Shade got in to break it up. This is anyone's match. Oh, Northern Lights suplex. PK. Some type of neck breaker right there. Oh! Ray Santos with the moon stomp followed immediately with the with the the break of the pin. Oh my god! Going after the knee now. Ace Zero was real strong at the beginning of this match, but it looks like he's a uh, he's kind of caught up. Now we're down to Ray Santos and Shade in the ring. I'm going to do my best to continue to call all the action as I see it, but they're, they're, it's just everywhere. I've only got four eyes. I can only see so much. Ooh, big elbow shot. Step up heel kick. 
Shade wisely rolling to the outside of the ring. Pantera getting sent back in. PK following. Catches a right hand from uh, Ray Santos. Ooh! Nice DDT there by Shade. Jawbreaker by Santos. Sends PK over the top rope. No! PK reverses. What that was Northern Light Suplex could go for the pin right there, but decides not to. Now it's, uh, Ace Zero is back to his feet. Everybody is firmly involved in this match right now. <laughs> Shade taking Pantero over to the ropes. Oh, Fireman's carry. Slice bread by Dos. Uh, good Lord, Ray Santos. <laughs> oh, in the knee to the face. Pantero looking for another airplane spin, maybe. Oh! Fisherman driver. Ray Santos back to the top. Oh, Pantero cuts him off. Oh, no, 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 no. Avalanche Hurricane Rana, or Frankensteiner, whichever one you want to call it. They're all effectively the same thing. Pantero and Ace Zero, the only ones in the ring. The Camp and Super Ace, or Super Aces. Firmly, uh-oh. What is Pantero looking for here? Oh, Torpedo DDT! Through the middle and lower rope. Oh my God, that was incredible. PK is up now. Shades back in the ring. Pantero's back in the ring. INCW in the camp going at it again. Oh, swinging neck breaker by Pantero. Pantero's going to the top rope. Could he be looking for that Panther dive? Oh, no. It looked like he went for an inverted 630. Oh, jumping DDT by Shade. PK is hung up on the lower rope. A zero. Running past. Oh, with a kick to the face. Shane's going to steal it. Shane's going to steal the win. One, two, three. INCW steals the win. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I gotta say, I did. <laughs> oh, that was that was that was pretty slick. <laughs> Damn good match, my all five competitors. Oh man, he so not only has he been doing the production, he's been watching all the tapes. That, that's that's where that's gonna go. Next up, we have Average Joe, the uh, the very, very strange individual. <laughs> Against Son of Asgard, the, uh, the very destructive individual. If you'll remember, Son of Asgard was brought in. Um, <clears throat> well, I say he was brought in. He came in and everyone thought it was the Viking. And then it turned out it wasn't the Viking. It was, it was a real trying time here in INCW and I'm glad it's over. We also uh, managed to prove that it's not Brawler Beckett. Um, so that was, that was a wonderful turn of events here for the home team. Um... 
I'm not going to say I'm not happy to have Son of Asgard on the team. I am, however, going to say I'm not happy at the way we had to put Son of Asgard. Or not had to, but we, I'm not happy at the way we got Son of Asgard on the team. Um, still waiting to hear back from the Blackwells about the condition of Patrick. Um, but we, that's just one of those things we're just going to have to kind of hold out and wait. Hopefully by the end of the show we know a little bit of something. Here comes Average Joe in all of the uh, not-so-average glory. Oh, my God, this is... Oh, man, I don't... I can't do this. <laughs> I've... I've witnessed in this individual in some of the most disturbing levels of wrestling I have. Look, oh, my God. Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. You know who? Average Joe reminds me of Macho Man Training Savage. That's probably going to get us kicked off the internet. I shouldn't have said it, but I did now. And, uh, you know, we'll go. Uh, too late. We're already there. It's, it's, it's in the record books. The first episode of season four is the last episode of INCW. <laughs> Here comes Son of Asgard. Still got the mask. Still probably going to tease taking the mask off. Uh, we, at this point, though, we've already seen what he looks like without the mask. Um, if you remember him in... Uh, off of a random draw, him and the Viking were put on a tag team. And did fairly good in the tag team tournament. Only to lose whenever they got to the title shot. But that's fine, because now the Viking's gone. And Son of Asgard had all the part in the world. Or all the all the hand in the world in doing it. I don't know what I'm saying. But either way. All right. Average Joe, son of Asgard. And here we go. Average Joe has him up. Ooh! Just dump that like average Joe is powerful. Um being able to just dump Son of Asgard over like that, like Son of Asgard is a mass. Ooh! Nice step up kick right there, but average Joe didn't go down. Chopped Son of Asgard, Son of Asgard didn't go down, but the STO got it. <clears throat> Went to stop Son of Asgard wisely rolling outside the ring. Average Joe kicked to the back, didn't do it. Oh, and the drop toe hold. Average Joe is relatively quick, and this is oh, oh, that's a that is a lot of weight just to be coming down on the back of you like that. Grabbed Son of Asgard by the face and just slammed him into the mat. Nice, got him by the mask, trying to take it off. He picks up the whole person, just with the head. The whole person. Rolling through. Joe has him up on the ropes. Sends him in again. Ooh! Nice hip toss. One, no, just a one count. It's going to take a little bit more than that to take Son of Asgard down. So we're trying to go after the mask again. Not looking to pry it, or not successfully prying it free, I should say. They're definitely looking to do it, but... Son of Asgard just cannot mount an offense. Going for the pump handle slam here. Ooh! Joe again, sending Son of Asgard into the corner. Son of Asgard fighting his way back out, but gets caught in there again. Steps over. 
trying to keep hold of the arm. Finally got out of the corner. Oh my god, what's happening? Okay. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on, who had the advantage in that. Good chain wrestling. Oh, son of Asgard went back to the well one too many times. Now Joe rolling around on the floor with Asgard. Picks him up, sends him back into the corner, and a big splash from behind. Looking again, grab it. Boom. That is the downside to having the fireman's carry takeover. Downside to having a beard is it's one more thing for somebody to snatch a hold of in these matches. Oh! Son of Asgard releasing a thunderous clothesline. Step through, and a knee to the face of Average Joe. Gonna send Average Joe into the corner again. Look for that big right hand miss. Average Joe. Ugh foot all in the face oh no 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 okay good 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 <laughs> there could have been so many bad things happening son of Asgard is trying to get Joe in that corner and I don't necessarily know why Joe with another just throwing all of his body weight one no To the lower back. Oh, son of that—that's using your head. <laughs> son of Asgard, going back to just fighting with everything he can, but Joe is just keeping this match smothered. Has him on the ropes, and then slingshots him back in. The winner of this match gets three points for their team. Well, depending on how they win. If they win by KO, they get a whole, uh, what was it, five? Something like that. Just pulling on that head again. Joe is keeping it like a slow tempo match. Like, it's just a grindy just methodical level match. The son of Asgard is just trying to bring all the powerhouse he can, just bring a house of fire in here, be super explosive, but he just, he can't get past, like, Joe just completely controlling the match. Look, right there. Oh, son of Asgard with a knee, had enough of it. Gets put in the corner again. Joe has him. Oh! Like, he's not getting a lot of momentum, but just the force that he does use. Oh, the rake of the back. Come on. Oh, and a big STO by Son of Asgard. Sends Joe back into the corner. Look for a body shot. Caught a knee. And a body. Oh, just laying him in. Big clubbing blows to the back. And then... Ooh! Using every part of that corner to just bring hell down upon Joe. Oh, Joe caught the leg. And a dragon screw. Son of Asgard is fighting back. Oh, big clothesline. Got out of there. And another big STO. It has taken almost everything Son of Asgard has. He's backed up in the corner. Maybe looking for that tornado boot. Oh! Right across the jaw of Average Joe. One, two, three. And that's all she wrote. Man. That was a comeback victory from hell right there. Once Son of Asgard was able to build up just that explosive couple of chain moves together, it was over.
Alrighty. Two. Well, we had one really chaotic match. And then this one was actually pretty decent. But next up, we have a first blood match for the hardcore title. Usually hardcore title hardcore championship matches can go on forever. But the first person to bleed is the loser. Like you make your opponent bleed, you win. You walk out champ. Will it be Johnny Walker or will Navy SEAL uh, be able to pull this one out? Even though it's not for any points in the world tournament or anything like that, Johnny Walker getting a, getting a win right here would actually do pretty well for uh like morale behind with the team however i say that the team incw has done one the first two matches so i think we're doing all right um we're not in any of the other matches so we can't win any more points today so we'll <clears throat> we've we've done our job i guess I think what I'm going to do uh, when it's like special multi-man, like battle royal level matches, we're going to stick with the uh, the winner of that match gets five points for their team. What the actual fuck is that? Huh. Well, that's fun. <laughs> Pardon me for a moment. Let me get this match underway and then... uh. There's JoJo. Haven't seen her in a while. Still don't have her mic plugged in. Poor JoJo. Poor, poor JoJo. <clears throat> Alright, first we got Navy Seal making his way down to the ring. If I'm not mistaken, the Navy SEAL's been Hardcore Champion, or he's been in a match for the Hardcore Championship before. Um, I, I, I just, I don't, I don't remember. I remember he was doing pretty good, and then I remember he fell off. That's, that's the extent of my memory with him, so... Hopefully he doesn't do that again. I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just fairly lost right now. I still don't know why he's got, like, super black eyes. Like, is he supposed to be a bad guy? Is that a problem? Like, do we need to worry about this? Here comes Johnny Walker. Something tells me he's just happy to be back. He didn't show up till the last show of season three. But he showed up at one of the most opportune times. He got the hardcore title. Another thing to note going into this match, Johnny Walker basically made a name for himself by super kicking people one time and busting them open. One time, and he would win a first blood match. Just, you know, throwing that out there. That it's 100% a possibility that this match is a super kick long. I don't remember him being tall enough to do that, but if he's strong enough to push that middle rope down, hey, get after it. Also, um, just so you know, 
Uh, just a little side note about the little Twitch channel that you're watching right now. We actually have emojis now. And if you subscribe to us and follow us and all that, you get to use cool little emojis. Um, I'm gonna... Well, I say we have emojis. We, we may have them... I don't, I don't see any. They may not be up yet, but they will be happening. Um, and it will be very cool. I am very happy about them. And if you subscribe, you get cool little things up next to your name. Let me go ahead and type something real quick while we're doing the introductions. Well, I mean, nobody's really doing the introductions. It's quiet. It's supposed to be my job, but let's see. You get all these cool little things next to your name. You get a crown. You get first. I mean, I don't know if you get first. I know I get first. I know there's like a couple of us get first, but still. And if you have Amazon Prime, you get a free subscription to anything on Twitch every month. So, I mean, if you want to do a, if you want to use that free subscription, send it our way. And here we go. Collar and elbow tie up. Johnny Walker and Navy Seal. First man to make his opponent bleed. You know, judging by Navy Seal's um, attire, he should be a much he should be able to out wrestle Johnny Walker. But he didn't just now. Taking it outside fairly quickly. Back elbow. Oh, and then a bell clap by Johnny Walker. Knee to the gut. Sledgehammer to the back. Is that a ref in the crowd? No, that's just somebody who wanted to be a ref. Went for the leg drop, but the, you can't get a pinfall outside, and there's no pinfall in this match. Johnny Walker with the toe kick and a DDT on the outside. That is definitely a step in someone's day. Follow it up with a knee to the face. You're going to bust them open, guaranteed. Johnny Walker going up to the top rope. Oh, got the elbow drop. Navy Seal looked like he tried to roll out of the way, but he rolled right into it. Got the side headlock. Johnny Walker may be, just be trying to force some of the blood to the head, so that way, just a little bit easier to bust them open. Maybe, not 100%, but it'll wear him down. That's the important part. Oh, went for the step up knee. Big lariat by a uh, Navy Seal there, and a backbreaker. And again, belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Navy Seal is starting to pick up the pace here. Big overhand rights. Sends Johnny Walker off the ropes. And a hip toss. All of these things are very good wrestling. None of them are going to bust open Johnny Walker. Got the Northern Light suplex. Walker sends him off the ropes. No. Whatever he had in mind, Navy Seal put a stop to it immediately. And there's a big DDT. Johnny Walker checking to make sure he ain't busted open. Navy Seal got him up. What is he going for here? Oh. Flipping neck breaker. Still not going to bust him open that way. Now he's focusing on the knees, maybe. I don't, there's no way to do that. And Johnny Walker with the jawbreaker. Got to be careful there. He can bust his own. Oh, what? what is he doing? Oh, that's how he won the hardcore title. The ref didn't see it, but we all did. Kick to the midsection. Has him up. Oh, throws him away. 
Goes for a big leg drop. There's no pin here. Johnny Walker saying it's over. I don't know. Is it? Oh! What is he doing here? Alabama slam dead center of the middle of the ring. Trying to find a, I guess, oh, Lutez Press. Oh, Navy Seal with the closed fist. That's definitely a way to bust open your opponent right there. Got him in the rear naked choke. Walker fighting his way out of it. Hit a, couple, hit a couple good elbows in the midsection there. Navy Seal has him up. Ooh, and hung him out to dry. Whoa, when did Johnny Walker learn how to do a hurricane runner? Got him in that side headlock again. Navy Seal looking to try and force his way out of it. If he could roll through, get back to a vertical base, or roll towards the center of the ring and get Johnny Walker on his shoulders. Just some way to alleviate the pressure. Oh, with the sling blade. Hard Irish whip into the corner. Looking for that knee again. Oh, with the elbow. Johnny Walker, you got to think if there was, if it was any other type of match, Navy Seal may have been able to pull that one out. Caught him with a back elbow out of nowhere. That is the downside to a first blood match. It can end at any point in time off of the simplest thing. Specifically the point of the elbow. Navy SEAL is not looking to be happy about that. Alright, next up we've got... Dave Davidson versus the Scorpion in an Extreme Rules match. Both these guys didn't quite make it into the World Tournament. But that's neither here nor there. They're still damn good competitors, and we still can't have every match on every episode be a tournament match. We're going to do our best. I'm going to have a minimum of three tournament matches per show, but I'm not going to overflow it because we got other people that aren't in the tournament that need to be showcased. We fell into that problem last season. We're not going to fall into that problem again this season, and here's how we're going to do it. Women are no longer going to be on Sundays. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Let that kind of sink in a little bit. That's right. There's not enough action in the chat right now. No more women's wrestling on Sundays. Correct, no puppies. Here comes Dave Davidson. The women were just taking up too much time, so they gotta go. Dave Davidson. His Twitter handle at Daddy Dave. Realistically, if I still had women's wrestling, it would completely 100% overshadow the world tournament. <laughs> like, the world tournament's doing good because women ain't having to wrestle on the card. Oh, I hope you guys have enjoyed the show so far. Um, I've enjoyed showing it. 
I've enjoyed bringing it back. We're almost pa we're almost out of 2019. Uh, we're almost into the as they call it roaring 20s. Uh, also, just to kind of keep things uh, traditional and like let y'all know a little bit about what's going to be coming up uh, on the 22nd. So three days before. Uh, three days before Christmas, we're going to have our annual Christmas special where someone, I don't know who, but someone will face Santa Claus in a Hell in a Cell match. Yeah. Maybe. It might be a Hell in a Cell match. I don't know. We'll figure that out. Maybe a Rage Cage. I like those a little bit better. And here we go. Dave Davidson, the Scorpion. Scorpion coming out, just big right hands and gets caught. Dave Davidson with the pump kick. And a running bulldog by Dave Davidson. Big clothesline. And here we go, Scorpion with the elbows to the face or to the side rather, side of the neck, side of the head, stepping through. Ooh, hyper extending the knee. Love saying that word. Not as much as some other people, but I love saying that word. Hyper extending. Dave Davidson, not looking very good right now. I say that, and then he sweeps the leg. Always sweep the leg. That's what I always say. Scorpion sends him over the top and dumps him back in. And caught. Scorpion trying to pick him up, but there's just too much. Like, it, the size difference between these two men is... It's, it's marginal, but it's just enough. Scorpion... Catching a couple elbows to the top of the head of Dave Davidson. Looking for the submission there. No, rolls through. Oh, nice double sledge. <clears throat> Dave Davidson looking for some hardware. Found a sledgehammer. And went for the back body drop. Oh, pump kick again. Oh, going right after the knee. That will guarantee that... Uh, that'll guarantee that Scorpion slows down a good bit. Oh! Flatliner on the outside. And another running bulldog. Dave Davidson. Oh, no, not again. Looking almost like a INCW's resident Punisher. Scorpion. Telling Dave to get up. I don't know what he's got planned for him. Why in the... Okay. Okay. That was annoying. Arm ringer into a leg drop across the arm. And he's got him hung up in the DDT. One, two, no. Dave Davidson out at two. Scorpion stepping through. Oh! Davidson with a forearm to break loose, and then that pump kick again. That is his answer to actually everything. Kick to the midsection. Oh! Laying some what looks like amateur boxing background down on Scorpion right here. 
Scorpion answers with a right, then a forearm, and then an elbow, busting Davidson wide open. Has him up. What's he got planned here? Oh! With the scoop slam on the ring apron, if you ask anybody, that's the hardest part of the ring, and they wouldn't be lying to you. Scorpion going to the top rope. Oh, went for the elbow drop and missed everything. Zero water in the pool. Back body drop by Dave Davidson. He's got Scorpion. Oh, is he? I don't know if that's a submission or if he's trying to take off the mask. Maybe both. Scorpion. Bouncing the head of Dave Davidson off of the turnbuckle. Surveying his damage. Waited a little too long to go for the pin if you ask me. Two, yeah, didn't get it. Drop the neck right across the knee. There's no rope break in an extreme rules match. Has the camel clutch locked in, but Dave Davidson fights his way out of it. Maybe he go. Oh, nope. Went for the toe kick. Caught him. Has him up for the package pile driver. That could be all she wrote. Where is he going? Oh, going after the leg again. He's looking to put Scorpion out for good, but he should have put him away. Ooh! That already busted open head of Dave Davidson driven into the ring apron, but he don't seem phased by it at all. Caught him with a, night box, a nice boxing uh, right hook. Now he got his leg sweep. And the crab can't win outside the ring. Extreme rules have weird, weird rules. Shouldn't have any, but, you know, it is what it is. Oh, no. Oh, on the sledgehammer. I don't know if it hit the head of the sledgehammer, but, oh, my God. Every bit of it you don't want to deal with. Oh, stopped just in time before. Oh, and they caught a DDT. They are going back and forth outside. Dave Davidson, a little groggy, holding his head. Getting back in the ring with that sledgehammer. Oh, into the back of the knee again. You know you want to use this some more. Don't throw it away now. What in the world is going on? Dave Davidson suddenly getting hyped up for zero reason just to catch a European uppercut. What is happening here? Okay. Davidson fighting his way through whatever Scorpion had planned. Double clotheslines. Caught the leg. Oh, sweep the other. He's... Oh, nice. Another step-up kick. One, two, three. Dave Davidson walks out with a victory. Look at that package pile driver. He probably could have went for the win right there, but instead he decided to go outside and grab the sledgehammer. And see what else he can get accomplished. Look at this. Oh, okay, just the handle, just the handle. But I mean, still, that's a that's a wooden handle, and his head just bounced right off of it like a basketball. Dave Davidson donning a crimson mask, but took home a victory. Congratulations to Dave Davidson.
hopefully he can continue to do that throughout the rest of the season. But now, this next match is two behemoths. Non-title match as Tapu Khan goes one-on-one -on -one with the INCW heavyweight champion, Victor Sokolov. This is a world tournament match. This will put points on the board for the camp or the Queen's Guard. This will be a destructive, uh, whatever, destructive combat. Like, everything's just going to suck. Like, everyone's going to die. We should empty the arena right now. I should unsanction this match so that way I don't get in trouble. But... We know what Victor Sokolov can do. I know what it looks like Tapu Khan can do. None of it looks good for anyone involved. Victor Sokolov coming out of Holy Wars with the INCW war, uh, heavyweight title, world title. That's not that. <laughs> we used to be the world title. Then we had an actual world title. Look at this guy. Oh my God. Uh, I, I, I attempted to argue that he's uh, he shouldn't be able to be part of the uh, the Queen's Guard, um, and then then he walked in the room and I said that's fine he could be on the Queen's Guard. <laughs> I haven't had my retirement match yet, and I don't want it to happen because I ran my mouth. Not by his hands. Look at that guy. Good Lord. Him and Victor Sokolov are... Oh, my goodness. Like... Wait, has Sokolov always been missing a tooth? Both these... Ah... Uh, I would hate to be at Thanksgiving dinner for either one of these individual songs. Victor Sokolov holding his... He's a two-time INCW heavyweight champion. Uh, the only other two-time INCW heavyweight champion we have is Info Warrior. And they've, those two have had a storied rivalry in and of itself. 20-minute time. Oh! Oh! Tapu Khan flew at Victor Sokolov and he just shrugged him away. Oh my god. 20-minute time limit. Oh, swinging neck breaker. What's happening here? If there is a double count out, neither one of these teams win any points. We just get to see two monsters kill one another. Tapu Khan sends Victor back into the ring. These guys are high energy. We, I've never, oh! Impaler DDT. I have rarely seen anyone just pick up Victor Sokolov. Taku Khan with a body shot. Caught him with a knee. Sends Victor into the corner. Oh, went for the big boot. Victor caught it. Victor with a spear. Standing over his destroyed opponent and just slings him across the ring. These are two titans. Oh, not even a one count. 
double leg sweep. It's like these guys know what the other one's gonna do. Oh! Using his head as a battering ram into the large chest of Viktor Sokolov. Chokes him, goes for the pin, no. You gotta think that any disqualification is gonna be thrown out the window simply because the ref isn't gonna call the match. Oh, and then hangs Victor out to dry. Tapu Khan flexing. Letting everybody know he's the uh, alpha male in this scenario, or he would like to be. Victor Sokolov heading outside. Tapu Khan goes back inside or sends him back inside. Look at that. He just got hit in the face. And Victor just shrugged it right off. Boom! Vicious clothesline, kick to the back. And the Siberian sweep. That is usually a sign of the end for everyone involved. Oh no. He's got him tied up in that torture rack, choking him with his own arm. Is Victor going to put him down? Or will Tapu Khan kick, like, be able to fight out of it? No. Victor lets go. He's not done. Tapu Khan sends him into the ropes. Ooh, big double sledge. As Victor in the center of the ring, and a fist drop. In the back. Oh! Victor, like a runaway freight train, just barreling down the tracks right through Tapu Khan, who wishes he wasn't on those tracks. Victor, look at this. I guess dragged all the man again, but. Oh! Gets walked through instead. Goes for the pin. Looked like there may have been a rope break, but Victor fought out anyways. Kick to the back. Steps through. Oh, gut busted. Tapu Khan looking for any way to grab a hold of the ropes, help himself up. Five minutes have passed in this match, and neither one of these guys looks like they're going to stop. I'm sorry. Neither one of these Titans look like they're going to stop. You got to think Iron Duke planned this out, scouting Victor Sokolov last season. What is Tapu Khan doing? Oh! Battering Ram headbutt again. One, two, three. How did he do it? With the Battering Ram headbutt, Tapu Khan pinned the INCW champion, arguably the most dangerous man in the camp. Victor's not going to appreciate this. Oh, no. I just wanted a good main event. I may have started a war. Oh, my God. Tapu Khan celebrating his victory. Got a win for the Queen's Guard. Oh no. Ladies and gentlemen, we may be in a bind this season. <laughs> that is. That is mucho not good. All right, well, I appreciate y'all watching. Um, holy crap, we are in a bind. Uh, I appreciate everybody watching. Uh, it's, it's good to be back again. 
But holy shit, we may have a problem on our hands. Uh, well, anyways, until next week, uh, that we, we're not going to have any Thursday shows until 2020. Um, I, I do a lot of work during the week. I'm working six days a week until the new year, at least. It could be longer than that. I don't know. Uh, it depends on how much people want to buy stuff. So, uh, yeah, with me working six days a week, I'm, I'm only going to keep it to the Sunday streams because that's my only day off. It's my only day where I know I'm going to be off at a decent time. I know I'm going to be around to do stuff. Um, but, yeah, uh, be sure to tune in every Sunday. Uh, follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitch. Subscribe to If you got Amazon Prime, just please give us your free subscription. It's not going to cost you any extra money, and you get all sorts of cool little toys. Um, if you don't like what you see, hey, don't subscribe. 100% fine. Um, but for the most part, we would really appreciate it if you did. Uh, we're going to make it worth your while in one way, shape, or fashion. Um, but yeah, the first episode of Season 4 is now in the books. The points are tallied. We have Wise Man Shade, or Shade. For short, the Hokage of the Anu Village with five points. We have Son of Asgard with three points. With both of them combined giving Team INCW eight points to start out this, the tournament. And then Tapu Khan coming in at the very last match with a surprising victory in my book. And uh, getting a win over... Uh, Victor Sokolov giving the Queen's Guard three points. So uh, we're, we're, it's actually looking pretty good. Um, next week we'll be showcasing um, the Mercenary Kings and the Super Aces a little bit more just because you only got to see them in one match tonight. Uh, so we'll showcase them a little bit more. We've also got some tag team action. There's probably going to be some trios action. I don't know how I'm going to line everything up yet. But be sure to stay tuned for all of it. And if you missed anything, this always gets uploaded to YouTube. Uh, it should be around Tuesday. It'll be up there. Uh, I think they usually go up around like 5 o'clock. But yeah, once again, appreciate everybody watching. It's good to be back. And uh, until next time, y'all have a good one.